got you. And then for the people who are homeless, you know, like, because I really do think the reason why your channel blew up is because you were so transparent. You know, you didn't, you know, you were able to put your ego to the side. So for the people who are homeless right now, how, uh, like, like, what are some tips for them to kind of get out of that? And how can they end up, you know, maybe even close to where you're at, where you're kind of back up on your feet, taking care of your kids? You know what I mean? Yes. Here's the thing. I have a daughter who's not biologically mine that I still you know, take care of. Then I have my son. Now, uh, when I was homeless, I didn't, I didn't even have access to my son. That was one of the reasons why I was mentally messed up. Uh, because of the fact I got two kids that potentially might not be mine, even though my son, that's a whole other story. I'm talking about my daughter, um, knowing that she's not mine. And it was messed up. And that was one of the reasons why I didn't care. I didn't care to be better. That caused me to just be okay with being homeless. Um, I slept in a car. You know, I had three days at the airport. But besides those three days in my whole life, I might have gone back to my grandmother's house, um, you know, because I fell for like a couple weeks. Then I'll get back up and get my own apartment. But what I tell people who are homeless, that, and the reason why I mentioned that is because I don't want people. I actually had a group of, of homeless people that came at me because they thought that I was pandering me being homeless, um, like their struggle for views. And I tell people um, my I was homeless sleeping in a car, but technically a car you're, you're homeless, but you're not homeless. You know, you're comfortable. But what I recommend for people, what I did, um, people who are homeless, if you're mentally messed up, because a lot of people are just mentally tapped out. Like me, I was mentally tapped out because my life, I'm like, my life, I had all this money that, that I, it was given to me, but I had all this money. I blew through it. Now I'm in Vegas and I have no money. I have no friends. I have nobody to turn to. I was mentally messed up, but I was strong enough to, because I know me, I was strong enough to say, you know what? I'm not going back to Youngstown as a failure. I'm going to figure it out. So I was at the airport. I looked at the paper and I saw that you had um, taxi companies hiring. In every city, you have jobs that would hire you within like, you know, two days. You know, you can call them. They'll hire you. What I would do, um, if you're not in a bigger city, then I would try to get to a bigger city because you have homeless shelters. I could have went to a homeless shelter, but I preferred the, the um, airport because I'm used to just figuring it out. I just sit there and, and then I had the gym to go to during the day. So I was only there at the airport at night for like five hours. So if you're homeless, I would go to a homeless shelter and get a bed. Okay. First thing. Uh, and there's, a, there's enough beds in most bigger cities. Smaller cities is tough because they don't have as many resources. Second thing I would do when you get to that homeless shelter, I would see about getting mental health because um, help, because most of the time, you might not want to admit it, but you are just not capable of functioning like a normal adult. You know, you're not able to function for 40 hours. You got to be built up to that. It might take some medication, but it is what it is. And once you get that together, because they have mental health uh, um, programs that they'll give you, you can do within the first three days being in that homeless shelter. Um, after that, I would go and look for a job, just get a regular job, and then um, – work for you know about 90 days before you look to move because the homeless shelters allow you to stay for you know a few months so i would just humble myself enough to just work that job 40 hours with overtime i see I, when i was in vegas i picked up a lot of people who were homeless while I was doing uber and i pushed them to do these things um but i would work that job save up once again don't buy anything other than things you you absolutely have to have and then after three months, I would love to get a car because now you can live out of your car. And if you save up for three months at a regular job, most places, you know, buy your pay places, and there's a bunch in most big cities, they'll approve you and allow you to get a small car at a decent price, you know, $300 a month, $250 a month um, car payment. And then now you can get out of a homeless shelter and just work. And now here's the thing, if your license is, is you, that's not an option, then I would just save and just build, just save, and then eventually get an apartment, get something you can afford. You know, in every city, they have low-income housing. If you can't get uh, bumped up that list or if it takes forever to get up the list, just get a cheap apartment and just start small. One other thing you can do is you can get two or three homeless people who are homeless together, and you can all put your money together and get a two-bedroom apartment and just share, you know, bunk up. That's one thing that I push to people. It ain't nothing wrong with five people. And that's the reason why not calling out a, a, a race, but 
Um, you see it, you saw it in Vegas, Hispanics, they will buy a house or rent a house that's like $1,500 a month. And you have literally four families living in that same house. You have like 14 people in that same house and they split the rent and bills between them each $500. And now they're making three, 4,000 a month. And that's just straight profit. So that's what I recommend to anybody who is homeless to just, um, get help, mental health. So that way you can get your, your confidence built up. Um, try to get a group of you guys to work together and then um, get the job three months later, look to get a place and go from there. If you got a good, if you got a license, you don't have no points or whatever such, I would get that car within that month because most buyer pay here places let you get a car for $500 a month. And I would do ride share because you can do it all day and then you just put the seat back, go to sleep. I wouldn't recommend it in dangerous cities, but in most cities you can literally do what I did when I was homeless. I drove taxi all day. And then I was able to get a um, hotel room. But then after like a, a couple weeks, I was able to rent my friend's car. Then a couple weeks after that, I was able to go and buy a car. And I did the ride share 24-7 until I was able to ultimately get out of it. Um, or once I get out of it, but do decent, you know, eight hours, days, um, three months in. So that's what I recommend to people who are, you know, homeless with nothing.